Okay, this is a, a fun one. Okay, this is definitely a fun one because this is how to be able to use the concept of a, like a group brainstorming session, right? Using the concept of rumors. So it's the, the rumors exercise for casts or classrooms. So you could literally, you sit around in a circle, you get in a circle, and you're going to be participating in creative license with each other, right? So you're going to understand that although some of these things are going to hit real, um, real spontaneity in, in you, there's going to be stuff that's, that's real there. It's under the creative license that you're going to just treat the whole thing like it's an imaginary exercise, even though there's, a real, there's real stimulus there, right? And this is key. So then you go around in a circle. And you organize yourself to start the brainstorming of what you could actually be believable to each person about another person. So you sit in the circle, just like when you do a group repetition, right? You have a group repetition, and then one person notices something, and then they, they start working with the repetition, and then it switches to another person. You just do the same thing. Be very lucid relaxed and understand that this whole construct is to be able to one get to know each other and to be two able to start working with stuff that's actual stimulus so you're working with actual real stimulus in your acting and this is key you want to mine that 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 stimulus so you're going to use rumors you're going to use rumors so you might have one cast member look at the other cast member and say that they have um, uh, a rumor that they could believe about a specific cast member or a certain classmate. And they look over their classmate and they, and they tell them the rumor. And the rumor might be that they believe that they might have uh, broke into their uh, parents' liquor cabinet one night. They believe that, that you know, it's a rumor but, but, you know, they definitely could believe that they would be, that, that would be part of, of something that th there's a rumor that they could believe about them. There are these programs that I use, and I use these programs to do these things like cartoons, to be able to accentuate, to, to, ex to absolutely um, amplify the emotions that I go through. And when I go through emotions, first of all, I absolutely emotionally prepare, sometimes even before the videos, because I, I love emotional preparation. I love to be able to get myself upset about one thing, get myself upset about another, and then put that into some imaginary work. And these cartoons, there's links in the descriptions below, and they can absolutely, they can amplify those expressions that you can learn to be able to get with your talent. Okay, so feel free, use those links, right? Or they um, crashed a, a person's car. The one of, the, you know, they crashed a person's car one day. Or maybe not drunk driving, just maybe just because they crashed a car because they were careless. Or the, a rumor that they could believe that could be a rumor that, um, I don't know, they, 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 one of the examples is they cheated to be able to get the audition. That would be a rumor, a believable rumor. Now, it's very important to keep the dynamic going within this stuff. The purpose of this is never to put each other down. It's not about ego. This is the absolute essence of it. The essence is to be able to do the exercise in a way that everyone knows, like, we're looking at stuff that's that's believable. We're looking at stuff and we want it to be real, but at the same time, it's not about our egos. Like if, if somebody says something to be to me, if somebody says something to them, it says something to them. It's a matter of then working and maybe writing down some of these things about the rumors that they think that they could be believable. And then you brainstorm that up and then you work with the writers to be able to say, well, these are the things that we have believable. We have believable things about ourselves. We could believe that, um, you know, we could be at our, uh, I don't know, uh, grandparent, grandpappy or grand, granddaddy or whatever you call them, uh, papa's house, and, and you could look at the whole thing and you could say, listen, um, 
they fell asleep one night and you broke into their, their liquor cabinet and you didn't tell them or something, right? And this could be an adult looking after a, an adult. It doesn't have to be underage drinking. It doesn't have to be that topic. It could be literally like that would be something, you know, that they could do, right? Or, you know, they could be, you know, essences like this. You want to you wanna see what could actually be believable. Now, it's going to get real very quickly. I'm trying to stay out of the, the nitty gritty at this moment, but the reality to this exercise, it gets very real very quick. And the, the essence of this is the ability then to be able to build trust within the cast. You want to be able to build trust within the cast where people are, are willing and capable of being in these imaginary circumstances that they would actually fit into. You know, the shoe fits, but it's an imaginary shoe. You know what I mean? Or, you know, if it, it fits the circumstance, that the actor does fit the circumstance. And then the actor being able to work with that then is able to be able to do stuff to be able to, to, to work with that, with that construct. And you can work with those circumstances within your cast. So try this out. And um, you could also be, it's a very good idea. You could also, topic the the topic it, the, the the circle so you topic the rumors exercise with a feeling so you want to work with like so then it's it's a little bit less like nitty gritty um it's more in a way that will help everybody realize that there's a topic right so everyone's certain to starting to think of the different topics for each other and you could look at betrayal well, one rumor that they could believe of their castmate for betrayal might be that um, Hi, I'm inviting you to actually join me live on the internet. And uh, if you would, you can bring your own emotional preparation. We can work on emotional preparation together and we can really hone down and help build out that talent with inside of you. Now, even if all it is, is you want to just bring an emotional preparation, do a spoon river, I don't mind. Come join us and absolutely practice the talent of your own acting. Gosh, there's so many different answers to this. I'm gonna have to really think about it. But write, write down whatever comes to you and you'll be very surprised as a producer what actually comes out of your cast. And then you work with that to be able to make the, the creations happen. Um, you look at, at another element, you know, bring up another element. Everyone gets a turn, goes around a circle. You could do this two or three times. You know, as long as there's genuine materials coming out of people and they're able to find stuff, it'll be fun too. I mean, it's it's a little bit um, uh, putting yourself out there, but that's what actors do. Actors put themselves out there to be able to have experiences. So um, there's there's another thing you could work at with uh, guilt. So you pick another emotion out. You get that emotion and you sit around and you say, listen. Uh, let's look at the topic of guilt. So when you're the individual in the chair and you're looking at the others, you're looking to see what might be something that you can brainstorm that would be something that you could be believable to you about another person that would cause them to feel guilty. You know, then, then you could look at it and you could say, well, you know, I could believe that... Um, I don't know, you could be guilty about not um, visiting um, somebody or you could, you didn't bring uh, flowers for uh, your um, uh, a funeral. You, you, I could believe that you, you, you would be guilty about this. And it doesn't, this is not real life. This is imaginary stuff that is going to pinch out real life. You're going to have that, that pinch of, of real expression. They might, the person that it's said to might wonder, how does that person even know? Or if they do know, well, that's just something you're going to have to deal with, with the cast dynamic. Because the thing is, this is about making sure that we're getting that real stimulus to be able to put in our work. So try this out. You know, um, you know, you could also do, um, but one thing that you lie about, one thing that you told the truth about. So you add that to the exercise of the rumor circle. 
uh, room, rumors exercise circle. And you work with that so that you're telling one thing you, that, that is a good thing, one thing is a bad thing. And what you can do with this material is incredible, incredible. Because you want to be able to find those ingredients to be able to build off that whole creative element. So then what you can do is you give all of that material as a cast or as the to the producers, you give it to the writers, you say, look, listen, um, I didn't realize um, I had this like thing I was ashamed of and I don't know if this is something that you can include in your um, uh, writing. It's not real life, it's just something that would be a believable rumor. Um, and then they can go, yeah, okay, well, let's look with, work with that. Well, we know that the, uh, the cast wants to be able to work with uh, uh, these types of different things. So this is a, one option for you to really open yourself up completely to be able to have these creative sessions that can actually replicate stuff that actually isn't exposing anybody in real life, but is actually in a situation that's still working with that component of being able to activate uh, a truth and reality. Listen, one more thing about this whole rumor exercise. You want, as a producer, to be able to get two different ingredients. There's two different ingredients. There's one is you want to get the rumor itself, which is the storyline, right? And then you got to get these two things. You want to get what's believable, what's a believable thing that's internal in the actor that the rumor is about, right? So then you can start building that imaginary circumstance out. And then you want to get the, the reason why it's believable to the person that said it. Why, why would they think that way? Why would, they, why would they come up with that? Why would they, you know, brainstorm what it is that, that's a reason why it would kind of like, what, what is it that would be the most believable reason why that person would have thought that rumor about the other person? And <clears throat> then what you can do is you can really start to really piece together the pieces of the creative vision of that and then you can start putting that storyline actually in your work and once you do that then you will see that you are giving your actors this incredible fertile component where your actors have this ability then where they have got something that's more um, likely to be able to offset this imaginary experience with, th with this reality and uh, that is such a gift for uh, producers to be able to give to actors, uh, especially when you've got the right cast. Um, and when you've got a cast that especially is open to being able to work with those types of uh, things, where they want to be able to explore these imaginary circumstances. Now look, this isn't far-fetched because I'll tell you, there's writing groups that sit around and all they do is brainstorm stuff the circumstances of, of the actual actors and what they can go through. We're just taking an extra step. We're taking the extra step of actually getting it from the cast and being able to take the extra step of saying, look, this is a uh, rumors exercise. We want to be able to do this to be able to, to, to find these imaginary circumstances that not only the writers can believe in, but actually the actors can believe in. And then you can then develop it and add different quirks and different things about the whole process. So um, consider this and then uh, let me know in the comments uh, how it goes, okay? Okay, so I teach people how to get upset. I have a lot of fun teaching people how to literally purposefully upset themselves, actually waking their own activations up so that they're emotionally activated. There's something that they can get upset about within a ballpark of emotion. But the key, the absolute key, is I don't want you to carry around that stuff in your life. That's what's called acting baggage. You want to be able to learn a technique. I have to be able to tell you that it would be a disservice for me to teach you all of these incredible techniques on how to access yourself as an artist without reminding you very nicely that you don't need your acting baggage in life. So feel free. Work on processes where you have a release time after you're doing your acting. And what this will do is it will actually amplify your work because it will give your acting muscles the break that they need in order to get the rest that they need so that your work will be even stronger. Okay, thanks very much.